says a river said it's flowing in this place said it's ankle deep it's waist deep I'm compassed about it there's a river swelling in this place oh and it's bringing healing to the land oh
your voices in this place and we will worship come on we will worship 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 oh 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 we will worship oh we will worship we will worship come on we will worship we will worship oh we will worship we will worship come on we magnify you lord said we magnify you lord said we will worship oh we will worship oh we will worship Place in 
another place. Another place in there. We're in another place. We're in another place in there. Come on, in another place. We're in another place in there. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. We're in another place in there. Another place. Another place. Come on and declare we're in another place. We're in another place. We're in another place in here. Another place in there. Oh, another place in there. Far above. Another place in there. We're in another place. We're in another place in there. We're in another place in there. Another place. in him, we're seated in, in heavenly places place in Christ in Jesus. Him. Another we're place. Another place in there. Another place. Another place in there. So we lift our voices. Come on, we lift our voices. Another place. Come on, we lift our voices. Another place. We're in another place. How many know we're in another place in Him? Uh, new dimensions, new dimensions. Oh, deeper depths, deeper depths. New dimensions, new dimensions of His glory.
probably everybody else is getting their hair done for the conference but now that we're here in the presence of the Lord can we lift up Jesus tonight hallelujah can we bless him hallelujah he's so wonderful he's the Lord our God that reigns reigns above every problem reigns above every trial every circumstance every situation shall we bless the Lord this evening come on shall we bless the Lord this evening hallelujah blessed be the name of the Lord lift those hands in the presence of the Lord tonight hallelujah we thank you Jesus oh we bless you tonight come on lift your hands in his presence daddy we just honor you tonight we lift you up we give you the glory and the honor and the power that is truly due to your name you are worthy in this place you are the lord our god and there is none like you nowhere you are the way maker the miracle worker the promise keeper you are the awesome god and we bless your name we lift you up in this place tonight jesus the king of glory the great i am that i am hallelujah we honor you we worship you we love you tonight we bless you bless the lord oh my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name you are worthy tonight jesus we honor you we thank you for who you are we love you we bless you we praise you we bow down before you we worship you we lift you up you are the lord jesus tonight and we give you praise and we give you glory you are the Lord of our strength. You are the Lord of our peace. You are the Lord of our joy. We honor you tonight. We lift you up. We glorify you. We thank you. We shall back you. We say that there's none above you. There's none beside you. You are wonderful. You are holy. You are glorious. We lift you up in this place tonight, Jesus. Echobo Shandarabasatende. You give us your peace. Peace like no other tonight. And we just salute you. E ramako sondiri biondo. E koba sondiri bio sende. We salute you. And we bless you. And we give you the glory. And we say have your way tonight. Think through my mind and speak through my vocal cords. And release your strength like no other. In this place tonight. In whose name? In whose name? In whose name? Bless the Lord. Can we bless God for the worship ministers tonight? Hallelujah. Come on, we can bless God for them in Jurassic Park. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting ready to make you guys a flyer. Y'all going to be mad at me because I'm going to put your faces on dinosaurs. <laughs> Oh my God. Can we bless God for the worship band tonight? Oh my God. I want you to get out of your seat and I want you to go quickly to just love on somebody and make sure that you're sitting close to the first two rows. Remember that um, God only works in the first three rows, right? I mean, <laughs> I'm just messing with you. It's not Bible. <laughs> uh, I love you. My sweetheart. So good to see you guys and the smiley faces. That's it. Spread the love. Come on and give them a word of encouragement. Good to see you. Your hair look good. You're looking good with your 34 and your 42 and your, you know, 12, whatever you have. You're looking good. God bless you. So good to see you. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm forbidden. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'll do it for Christmas. <laughs> Minister Trisha, I love you, son. God bless you. Yes. I found family for you. You see Prophet Johnson's sister? That's your relative. Look how y'all look alike. <laughs> oh, my. Bless the Lord. Keisha, love you. I know. Bless the Lord. Oh, feel all that love. Bless the Lord. Glory to God. And y'all can come closer to this side, praise team, if you know... I don't know where everybody is tonight, but sometimes that happens the day before conference, the, uh, the Tuesday before conference.
But just come as close as you guys can. Let's get over here. Bless the Lord. And while I'm at it to the leadership, I know a lot of them are, you know, running around trying to get stuff done so that everybody is free for this weekend. But we continue to tell you guys that we are the kind of ministry that we are and growing to be because of your faithfulness. We bless God for you tonight. Can you help me bless God for the leaders? Yes. Just awesome and amazing people. You guys truly help to make our work load easier. Easier. You know, I have some persons coordinating some stuff for this week. Minister Sharita and the team. And they're working on some stuff here. And today I got a schedule from two of the other daughters that just practically planned the rest of my week for me. Which was so helpful that they didn't even know what they did. You know, just to make sure that my kids are going to be picked up and clean and fed. And that's important too. You know, especially since Lala is having a prom on this weekend. Yeah, I know. And she's going with her father since he's, um, yeah, very protective over Lala. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I don't want to go any further without blessing God tonight for my very dear friend. Oh, my goodness. She knows how much we truly love her here. I want you to pour some love on Pastor Latasha Johnson for me. And just let her know, come on, you can do better than that. And just let her feel the love. We love you. And we don't just, we don't just love you because you're Prophet Johnson's wife. Come on now. We don't just love you because you're Prophet Johnson. We love you because you're sweet. The people can feel that you're sincere. And, and I'm so happy to call you my friend. You're amazing. <laughs> Pastor Tasha sings at the end of every sentence. So I've been around Pastor Tasha. Now I'm singing at the end of every sentence. I go home saying, wait. <laughs> oh my goodness. Pastor Tasha, we love you. She has two of uh, the daughters from their home here. And who happens to be, by the way, her sister-in-law, her sister-in-love. That's what we call it. Okay. This is Prophet Johnson's sister, by the way. And uh, one of her faithful uh, armor bearers, uh, Auntie Angie, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. So great to have you guys. You know, she came ahead of time because her heart is to make sure everything goes just the way I've really expressed to her and just to just be the support that I need. She's just truly amazing. Just truly amazing. And let me tell you something. Friday night, I'm telling you, she's going to walk us through a place She's really going to walk us through. Pastor Tasha has so much word in her belly. And she's really going to walk us to a place. And what I love about her is she's not afraid of being vulnerable so that you can be free. And I'm telling you, you guys are really going to be blessed on this weekend. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. But we cannot go any further without truly honoring God tonight for our dear senior pastor, Dr. Lincoln George Coffee. My sugar pie honey bunch. I am so in love. You can tell, right, Trey? Yes, it's true. I love him with all my heart, with all my liver, and with all my kidney. He still makes me quiver in my liver, and I absolutely love that man of God. Pastor Coffee, God bless you. We can't wait to see you. He's going to be here with us this weekend. So I'm so excited about that. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Everybody's excited about conference this week? Yeah. This is going to be big, y'all. And when I say big, I'm not just like talking about numbers. I mean, it's going to be big because of the shift that's getting ready to happen. And you got to learn how to pull on impartation because I realize that God can be in a place. And he responds differently to different people, not because he thinks differently about you, but it's because it's a matter of reach. Yeah. You know, I have two kids and sometimes one gets my attention more than the other when they both need me because of how much the other one will reach. Yeah. Yeah. 
So you got to learn to pull for what you need. And if you let mantles come in this place and you don't pull on something that's going to shift and open heaven over your life, you can't blame us. We are bringing it right here for you, for you to be blessed, for you to get what you want. You can't underestimate mantles like Dr. Cindy Trim. Come on now. I'm telling you, you guys haven't even met some of these people. Pastor Anita called me today, Pastor Latasha. And when Arlene was with me, where's Auntie Arlene? And when she began to tell me already what God gave her for open fire, I said she could have never gone on the schedule another day than Sunday. Because the entire church needs to hear what God has given this woman of God. So you better clear your schedule to make sure you are here. Hallelujah. It's so painful when, when, when there's a release and you have the members of the church and they're not here and then they come back two days later to get help for something that was available two days ago. No, we're going to do better than that, right? Yeah, we're going to do better than that. Yeah. Bless God. So I'm excited about this weekend. I'm definitely not going to keep you long this evening because guess what? I can't because <laughs> the guys are coming to strip the floor and clean it. Yeah. So that's why. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. But I want for you to grab your Bibles with me. Media. Can we bless God for the media ministry, by the way? They are just awesome <laughs> and amazing. <laughs> I absolutely love those guys. Thank you all so much. We can't do this without you. Jurassic Park, you guys are amazing. So I'm making this flyer, and it's going to have dinosaurs, and their faces are going to be on them. I promise you, that's what I'm going to be doing. And they're going to be mad at me for doing it, but I'm going to so do it. <laughs> Look at Minister Tim. I'm so going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to paste it all over Facebook. I, was like, I just love these people. I feel so safe. <laughs> that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have all of them all around. You watch. I'm going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be something. <laughs> Bless the Lord. But we want to jump into this new series. Uh, Pastor has mandated for us to go to this direction because of where God is taking the ministry. And we want to be sensitive to that move and we want to be prepared for that move. By the way, as I was just looking at Auntie Ursula, I wanted to tell you guys, thank you so much for an awesome weekend. For those of you that was able, first of all, to make it to San Antonio, you guys just did not know what you did for me. You just don't understand what you did. When I saw you, your face, your presence, you didn't even know what you did for me. You guys made it so easy for me to have ministered and do what I did. Believe me, okay? I'm telling you, it wasn't just the anointing. It's because you were there too. Bless the Lord. I'm sharing that with you, Pastor Tasha. I noticed that it just popped up. Technology. Our phones were talking. Bra, there it goes. Yeah. And uh, I wanted to also tell you guys thank you so much you know, for all the Mother's Day love and wishes and gifts and stuff. And I could just feel the love. I know you guys love me. I know that. And you know, it's so good because I've met so many pastors' wives. Media, while I'm saying what I'm saying, uh, 1 John 4 verse 8 and 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 4 to 7. 1 John 4 verse 8 and then 1 Corinthians uh, 13... Do we even, am, are these things even right? Mm, okay, better be. <laughs> so, um, but what I wanted to say was, you know, I've met like a lot of pastors' wives that has never really found their place in ministry around the people that they serve, but I don't have that testimony, you know, like that. I mean, you, you guys, I know y'all love me. I really believe in my heart that it's not just Pastor Coffee that you guys love. I feel the love and I feel the support and I feel the honor and the respect. And that means a lot to me. And I just really love you guys. I really do. Gosh, Jonathan is so sweet. My goodness. Bless the Lord. Media, are you ready to go? No, no, we're not doing that. No, no. Uh, something I got to be able to hear in like 30 minutes, okay? So yes, bless the Lord. But we do, we do know our confession, right? While media, while media is doing that, let's just open the atmosphere. Lift your hands. One, two, three. I have power. I have love. I have a sound mind. I have physical and mental strength and ability. 
over all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm me in Jesus name one more time I have power I have love I have a sound mind I have physical and mental strength and ability over all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm me in Jesus name one last time come on I have power I have love I have a sound mind I have physical and mental strength and ability over all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm me in Jesus name now come on bless God yeah when we speak and declare the word of God over our lives it opens something up in our spirit now let's run to our series on loveology the study of God's love the loveology the study of God's love bless the Lord and the word of God reads in first John 4 and verse 8 let's do this together what does it say one two three stop right there read that again one two three stop I want for you to think about what you just read so far and he who, I don't know, but anybody, right? And I want for you to begin to put it in your spirit. Because God is really going to be dealing with our hearts. Because one day we're going to have to stand before God. Right? Oh, y'all want me to switch this now and pre preach something else? Come on now, y'all know this, right? But I want for you to begin to digest this. Because love is going to be more than just a feeling to you by the time we're done with this series. Come on, one, two, three. Why? Why? So he who does not love in his words, in his actions, in his heart, does not know God. And that word know is genoskio. It is the Greek word to have fellowship and intimate relationship with. He, you might know of God, but you don't know God. So the one that is not loving in his attitude, in his heart, because you can be kind to people that you don't love. So you don't fool nobody just because you're being sweet when deep in your heart. Oh God, you're going to make me start too early. This wasn't the plan. I'm trying to take it easy tonight. But he who, come on, one, two, three, one last time. Why? So let's look at what love is. Uh-huh. Loveology, we got to do this series once a year. Every year, Pastor makes a mandate that we do this series because when the church begins to experience growth, it cannot experience growth without love. Amen. Hallelujah. And the word of God says, Love suffers long and is kind. Love suffers long and is kind. It's not to suffer as in to not have any money. It's to be long-tempered. So it doesn't get angry easily at people. Shut you down. Ain't got nothing to do with you. Can't stand you. Oh God, I think Pastor must have, I don't know. Maybe we're in the wrong. I don't know. It's probably, yeah. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Yeah, love is not proud and boastful and it's so all about me. You know, come on now. It is not puffed up. Does not behave itself rudely. It's hard for me to believe you love me when you're nasty and unkind to me and you speak the way you speak to me. Because when you have love in your heart, even if, even if you're upset and you're angry and you do it, there should be some conviction. It can't be that you keep doing this. Because love does not seek its own. It's not about me. Come on, you need to look at your neighbor and tell them. Look at them. Come on, tell them. I know that you know it's not about you. And it's certainly you finish it. You tell them it ain't about them again. My God, you need help. 
Bless the Lord. Lift your hands. I'll just stop right there and run the rest. Lift your hands. God, we bless you. We are open tonight. Move in our midst in Jesus' name. Now take your Bibles and your notebooks uh, and let me begin to do some work here for the next few minutes. We are starting our series on love. Uh, we're probably going to be running it for about eight weeks, maybe eight weeks. You can start loving people rightly, right? No? We need more time than that? Okay, that's fine. I don't have a problem. I could, I could go as long as y'all want me to. You know? Yeah. How many of you honestly believe that our church, let's take our eyes off people's church now. How many of you honestly believe that Open Fire, your own ministry, can do with some more love? Raise your hands. Let me see you. And how many of you believe that you are responsible for making sure that that happens okay two of you bless god all right no problem okay all right so it's all of our <laughs> responsibility to ensure that love god's love now not man's love and we want to be able to identify and define both because the way that god loves and the way that we love it's not the same we know that we love people based on who we can tolerate based on what we can tolerate i didn't came expecting to get an amen it's okay i'm just doing an introduction and so we love people based on who's nice to us and who did not offend us oh god i'm in the wrong church and um, but y'all just tell me we could do with a little bit more love so what's the problem with me talking like this come on now y'all just open it up for me to act like that all right and so um and so there is the human love that has its limitation because it's conditional but then there is the love of god where i know you're nasty and i will still be kind and respectful to you because uh, the love of god has nothing to do with how you feel it's a decision of obedience to to God so you may not wave at me I've met plenty of Christian people that act like they see me in church and they smile with me and when they go to the store I don't know if it's because I dress like I'm coming from somewhere else they don't recognize me people be hiding from me for real y'all and I mean you say hi and they start taking the other you see what y'all have never done it so so y'all are awesome y'all are wonderful and it has never been done to you but what I'm saying is some of us are okay you know uh 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 doing certain things in a particular way but but this is not how the love of God functions it demands a little bit more of us this love that we are called to is going to demand that you die to yourself I don't think you just heard me this love I'm speaking about it's going to demand that you are going to die to yourself dying to yourself don't mean to commit physical literal suicide because you know some people have to explain Bible right dying to yourself means that you're gonna give up your desire and what you want and your attitude and the way that you have the right to act about the situation for the benefit of another person now that's love for the benefit of another person. And until you begin to live. Boy you're handsome. And until you begin to live. <laughs> for the benefit of somebody else. You are truly not yet living the life of a Christian. I need to say that again. Until you start living for the benefit. <laughs> Come on now married people. Because I know how it is in the beginning of my marriage. It was all about me. Till I read that scripture and said it didn't apply to me really. It was Lincoln that needed to do all of these stuff but love does not demand its own way because when you say you love someone you begin to look out for their benefit more than yours I don't think you just heard me love will make you more concerned about the other person hallelujah this is how marriages become successful because you stop thinking about what you can get to be happy and instead you start thinking about hallelujah what you can do to bless and be good to somebody else come on now y'all don't like that okay I'm gonna find something you like I'm gonna find something you like and so one of the first thing that we want to look at in our anchor scripture for tonight is he that loveth not knoweth not God he that loveth not knoweth not God and the Bible tells us what love is 
So we should at least know what love looks like and what love is. You've already heard me taught this before, that love is not just an action, it's not just affection towards someone, but love is a person. Love is a person. Love is a spirit because the Bible said that God is love and God is a spirit. Therefore, God is the spirit of love. And the person that don't love people does not have the spirit of love living on the inside of him. Is that clear? Hallelujah. He that loveth not, and notice it says loveth, which means or imply that he that does not love then know and continues to love does not know, is not in a true genuine relationship with God. Hallelujah. Because let me tell you something, a lot of relationships that are affected, it's not because people didn't love each other, it's just that people didn't know God. You think I'm just in my marriage because everything is good all the time, every day. No, it took God for me to stay in this. Come on now, because everybody can justify why you don't need so-and-so in your life. Come on, y'all ain't going to say nothing, but you know I'm going to be real, right? And we can justify all of these things, but the truth is, it's when we're obedient to God and understanding what he requires. Because when I want to walk out, God says forgive. And when I want to have an attitude, God said you're petty. Now your Holy Ghost don't talk to you like that. I am so happy. When I grow up, I want a Holy Ghost just like yours. Your Holy Ghost don't talk to you like that. So, But God had to tell me, you are petty, 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 April. Just petty. What's that about? And when I was finished looking at the whole situation, I was like, I am so carnal. And then you know, you know, you know you're going to have to apologize. And know you're going to have to eat your pride and you don't like that because you feel your chest just wrenching inside of you because you know act out of character. Out of whose character? The character of the nature of God. One of the things I want to tell you quickly, and I want you to get this in your mind if you get nothing tonight. Remember tonight is introduction. For this series, we're going to be looking at the love of God. The love of God, and then we're going to look at how this love of God is supposed to function among us in the body. Right? So we don't just want to have a definition. We want to understand how it needs to function. Because if, if, if offenses weren't going to come, hallelujah, the scripture wouldn't prepare us for it in love. Right? So we want to know how to manage this love of God, hallelujah, amongst each other because we're growing. Paul said it's that you are abounding and growing till the love of Jesus Christ becomes rooted. Media, if you can pull up for me Ephesians 3 verse 17 to 19 till the love is rooted in your heart. Rooted in your heart. <laughs> hallelujah. Bless God. And so... Like I was saying earlier on about love. I don't remember what I was saying earlier. And I know it was making a point. It will probably come back eventually. But, but let me go to definition now. <laughs> Bless God. Let me pull over to, to, to the definition now. So we can understand what love we are speaking about. And what is expected of you. Because I am so tired of persons say they love God. And I'm seeing relationships and families and lives and churches. Are being broken up because people don't understand. That love has a character. If you say that you love God then let me ask you something when we look in 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 4 to 7 the Bible said that love is patient is God patient God is love the Bible said that love is kind is God kind God is love the Bible says that love does not envy is God envious come on now the Bible says that love is not puffed up is God puffed up and full of pride now, for those of us who are easily offended, the Bible says that love is not easily provoked. Y'all yeah. ain't going to say nothing. Where's all that stuff? Just, 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 what just happened? It's not easily provoked. So could it be that for those of us, not you, just those of us, right, that get easily offended about everything, just highly sensitive, sensitized Christians, just, 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 just sensitive, right? Could it be that it's because our roots aren't really rooted in God the way that they need to be? So we get upset and we overanalyze everything. And some of us are mad with people that didn't even do us anything just because we thought that they did it. Love does not operate.
operate like that. Come on. And I'm going to walk us through this because new people are coming in. Uh, and some of us don't even realize the way that we are. And we make Christ, we, uh, we market Jesus Christ and let him look bad to the world. So people don't want to come to the church. Because if I have to come here for you to treat me like this after I'm done dealing with it out there. What's the difference? Yes, I know that the church is a hospital. But in the hospital, people get better. When do you plan to get better? when do you plan to get better come on now so we have to work through this to get our attitudes right in our marriages in the different auxiliaries that we are working at because we need unity because the level of anointing that we're praying and putting a demand on in this church it will not function without unity in the church hallelujah even demons know that without unity they can't accomplish anything and we who have the power of the living God on the inside of us sit back and allow the devil to come and keep camp in the church because we don't know how to keep our hearts right. Come on now, don't get, when y'all get quiet like that, y'all just extending the time and I don't have the time because time is money. Those people are coming to clean the floors tonight. Thank you, I appreciate it. So let's do a walk now. Are you ready? Definition. I'm going to give you this and then we're going to jump over into Ephesians because I want for you to understand that love must be rooted. Rooted. How many of you understand that in order for something to be rooted, there has to be certain conditions surrounding that thing? Right? Uh-huh. Not every seed that you throw there is going to catch root just because. Because if you throw it on the carpet, it ain't going to catch no root. It needs the right kind of a heart that will respond rightly to God and to people for that love to become rooted. And some of us are at different levels of God love. Some of us are at 30 fold. Come on, no, y'all ain't gonna say nothing. All right, because you want to be at the 100 fold, but you can only love at 30 fold. Uh, come on, no, you claim that you love at the 100 fold, but as soon as I do something to upset you, you don't want to come back to the church, you don't want to talk to people. Come on, no, y'all ain't gonna say nothing now. And you don't understand that the difference between the 60 fold and the 100 fold is 40, and 40 is warfare. Because love is the greatest spiritual warfare that you will ever fight as a believer. Because I'm here to pronounce, I'm telling you, there will be more people in hell because of unforgiveness and bitterness over a piece of five minutes. Because we think, oh, all fornicators are going to go to hell. Oh, you adulterer, you fornicator, we call, we do. No, they're going to hell. So where are you going? You're in the front seat with them with your unforgiveness and your bitterness right in your heart. Because the Bible says nothing that defiles will enter into the kingdom. And the Bible says bitterness and unforgiveness defiles you. So because people are fornicating and doing all sorts of stuff, we judge them. Oh, you drink, you smoke, you this and you that, but you still have not forgiven. You still don't know how to love. And one day some of us are going to stand before God and we may hear the sad truth. Depart from me. I never knew you. Because those who don't love, they do not know God. And we need to deal with this harsh reality as Christians. Just sensitive and negative. Just negative. Jesus. Oh, just negative. You ever get around people? They don't have nothing good to say. Jesus God. You have to deal with those people in the middle of your day. Because you, hum, let me give you wisdom how you handle your day when you have to deal with people. Start with high energy people that's not going to pull stuff from you. In the middle of the day, you deal with the one that's going to suck you out. And then when you have to tone your day down, the last person that you seek to talk to, make sure that there's somebody that can pour back some positivity in you. Because negative people will drain your energy. Y'all ain't going to say nothing because you're probably suspicious of a few folk right now. You don't want them to know you're suspicious of them so you ain't going to really say nothing. So now we want to understand what God's love is. Love is true, genuine, unconditional, unconditional. Unco now listen to me. Love is not friendship. Let me fix that before I even go any further. Love is not friendship. Because friendship is conditional. 
you don't need to be my friend for me to love you unconditionally. Love is not friendship. Minister Blunt, please tweet that. Love is not friendship. Come on now. The friendship love or the filius love functions out of a different kind of love because it's conditional. I can love you if you gossip about me. I can love you if you stab me in my back. I can love you if you hurt me and wound me. Hallelujah. But you're not necessarily my friend. You're not in my immediate circle. But I can still be patient with you. If you're hungry, I can feed you. Hallelujah. I look for every opportunity to be good to you. But it doesn't require me being friends with you. And so I had to come to those realization because I used to have to feel that everybody I love had to be my friend. Then I realized, my God Almighty, it does not work like that. Even Jesus, every level he was going, there was a level where he had the 12. There was another level he could only take the three. And there was another level he couldn't take nobody else. Because there's different levels to your social circle based on the spiritual altitude you desire to go. So we don't have to be friends of me to be kind with you. But don't twist me being kind with you that I necessarily want a friendship from you. Because you're not mature enough to handle my circle. Because if I allow you in my circle, you're going to, oh God, you're going to wish you never knew me. Because you're going to get offended. Your expectations won't be met. And that's what people do. We come in church and we expect. I'm, 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 I know what I'm saying. I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. And the only reason why we get offended in relationship is because we invite ourselves in spaces we were never invited in. And so, and so, you have to learn how to define and draw the lines. Because not because we go to I up together, it doesn't mean that I necessarily want you in my house. But I still can be good to you. I know you're a gossip, I still have to love you. But I don't want you in my house because you might tell lies on me. You might make up stuff. And if I discern in my spirit that you are that kind of a person, I'm still going to treat you good, hoping that the love of God in me will influence your heart. But I'm not going to trust you to turn my back to you. So love is not friendship and love is not trust. Let's not get it twisted. Let's not get it stupid. You're right, Mickey. Love ain't stupid. Let's not get it twisted. Love it. I, come on, you see what I'm trying to do? Break this foolishness out of our head. Love is not friendship and love is not trust. Yeah. I can be kind to you without trusting you. Ask me how I know I do it all the time. I know that there are people, they'll turn on you like a lizard in a... You know that lizard... What is it called? The chameleon. You, do you know the true color of a chameleon? Is that the one that changes its color? Do you know how you identify the true color of the chameleon? That's what you call it, right? You know what you have to do to know what its real color is? You have to hit it. And when you slap it, you know what it becomes? Black. And so, not because I look like something... When I get hurt, you will see the real me. I will say I love you and stay around and stick it out. But the moment I get offended by you, my color change, my attitude change because it was never in me in the first place. That's how you know and recognize. I know you're good until I slap you. I know you're good until my attitude affects you. And then what was in you come out all along. What was in you come out all along. And so you can't invite people in your space who you have never hurt before. I'm talking about love. I am trying to help you. Because if we're going to get this right about how love works in the church, love works by the wisdom of God too. You need wisdom. Because when your discernment tells you, you can only invite this person five foot in. That's all you need to do. 
and you need to have the invisible barriers up that you are conscious of because they may not be conscious of it. And so if I have made up my mind that if you have never been rebuked by me as an individual, not as your pastor, what I'm saying is if being around me as a person haven't robbed you yet and you still have the right attitude, you're not fit for my social circle. So let's get it clear what love is and what love isn't. And if you allow people in your personal space that have never been trusted. And they've never been tested to be trusted. But this is the, I am speaking not only because of the wisdom of God's word. I am speaking from experience because I believe because they're sweet, I'm going to bring them in. And we override that, that thing in our chest that says you know this person is a little messy nah you know this person is a little you override what you feel in your chest because you love people more than God and you make excuses to them that no get you in trouble love ain't friendship and love ain't trust so we want to get it right because people are going to come and you need to understand what love really is loveology you need to understand what love really is because not ev everybody that comes we ought to love them like Jesus loves them absolutely but let me tell you something Jesus loves everybody but he doesn't call everybody friend because he said only those that do the will of my father hallelujah they are my friends and some of us are friends with people that God don't have nothing to do with Because if Jesus' standard says uh, that it is those who love my father and do his will, they are my friend. Now, if you say that you're a friend of Jesus, how is it that your friends uh, are those that constantly walk in disobedience to God? The Bible said, do not be deceived. Uh, bad company corrupt good character. It's a matter of time before they influence who you ought to be before God. I am talking about love. Because some of us are so spiritual, so deep, I mean deep, and God had to show me, you don't have more compassion than me, April, and you don't love more than me, but you're not as wise as I am, and so when I am telling you no, and you override it because you don't want to feel that you're judgmental when the truth is your discernment is not yet developed, so you struggle with, maybe I'm being judgmental. Maybe it's just me in my mind. I don't know. And I used to struggle with that stuff until I begin to understand that, no, this is who you are. And when your spirit man is open and you discern that, ah, oh, this isn't somebody that should be in my space and my life like that. I must love you like a sister. I see your errors and your weaknesses. I'm going to help you, but I'm not going to trust you. So we need to make it clear. But not because you don't trust people, it doesn't mean that you don't love people. So let me balance it out now. Because not because you suspect that while we're all in the same hospital, because you might be here for drinking and I might be here for drugs, but all of us got something going on. So we're all in the same hospital. Bless the Lord. And everybody has something going on, but we still have to be conscious of how we treat people. Because what happens is some of us need to be delivered from pride. You know why I say that? Because you don't remember what you were before Jesus saved you. So people come in the church because you're saved and sanctified and full of the Holy Ghost and fire, rain, baptized, yeah, you. And because you're all of that and a bag of chips, right? Somebody walks through the door, they're in homosexuality. They are drinking, they are smoking. They, are, they have a stench of the world on them but you forgot that you used to sleep around you forgot what you used to do and no you don't know how to love people because your pride has affected your heart and now you become prejudiced rather than walking in God's love no they have tattoo and uh, you know I just don't do that no you forget where you were three years ago you forget where you were just a few weeks ago. I don't do that kind of a stuff, really. No, really. And so 
We want to bring the balance to it. Am I making any sense? Am I making sense? So we want to bring the balance to it to have a clear... And I'm telling you because one of the most prejudiced set of people you will ever find is in church. Prejudice. And I am in the church. I work in the church. I love church people. I love church people. I love people. But I know that one of the places you will experience some of that stuff that is so painful because we forget. You never used to drop it like it's hot. You only used to drop it. But um, that's fine. You never did none of those stuff and you forget where God took you out of and you never struggled with drinking and you, you still don't have a desire for that marijuana. You know you, no, you ain't scared to drive downtown because the scent of the weed uh, will, will shake your world and you might go the wrong direction. No, y'all have never been there because you've been saved all your saved life. And you're wonderful with your wonderful self. First lady, calm down. First lady, behave yourself. That pastor needs to move you off the schedule. And you forget. You need to tell your neighbor, don't forget where God took you from. Yeah? Yeah, because you don't have no issue. You don't miss the liquor. You don't miss the clubbing. As a matter of fact, it wasn't you doing it. It's my old self. I'm dead. And so love will put compassion in your heart because people are coming in and they're not where you are at. How about that? How about that? They've not been saved all their saved life. How about that? You never backslid. You don't know what it's like going back to the world. I bless God for you. That's not my testimony. So I can't handle people the way that everybody else does because I remember when I struggled. I remember when I wanted to stop sleeping around and I couldn't. I remember having demons dealing and working through me and doing stuff. But it was the love of God that brought me to repentance. It wasn't judgment and criticism. And sometimes people get angry even at leadership because I don't judge you the way that they feel like you deserve it. So you messed up, you do something, move them. Do this to them. Do No, wait, hold on. Wait a minute. Stop, wait. You forget. You forgot. You so full of God now. You forgot where you're coming from. Because I found out it was not the judgment of God that made man change because I would be in hell. It was his love. And when I begin to see his love, I said, God, because of who you are, you don't deserve me living in a life of fornication without being in covenant before you. It was love that made me stop doing. Y'all acting like it wasn't nice. It wasn't nice. Y'all forgot. It, it was love. Y'all know, know you're first lady from the street. I'm so ghetto. I'm trying to work on it. But um, so, so, no, y'all forgot. The drinking, it wasn't bad. Y'all acting like the Baileys was, was, was nasty. <laughs> Y'all forgot. Yeah, because the Bible says sin has pleasure. Why do you think people keep doing it? Yeah. It has pleasure. And I had to give up that pleasure because I love God. Because one day I recognize he does not deserve this. Because y'all think that when y'all stop messing around that you doing God a favor. You're helping yourself not to die a little bit faster. You ain't doing God no favor when you stop messing around. Like, God, I've done all of these things. I stopped drinking and sleeping around. Yeah, you should have not been doing that in the first place. Like, God is required to just move just because you stopped drinking two months. So we don't want to forget where we're coming from because you're going to meet people. They're going to come in here. They're going to be tattooed from their lashes right back down to their toes. They're going to have all sorts of stuff going on with them. And if you start looking at them funny, like they smell bad when you forgot how you used to be and how you used to look. Because if we would have seen you five years ago, I would have to get all the modesty cloth and wrap you up. Like Lazarus. Come on now. Come on now. 
And so I want to prepare your heart not to be judgmental because the Bible said in the book of John that there is no judgment in love. So don't tell me that you love me and you're constantly criticizing me. You cannot say open fire that you love each other and you're constantly putting people under your spiritual magnifying glass when you haven't even met God's requirement because he says judge not and you will not be judged. How about take the log out of your eyes first before you realize that I got a lust problem. What about your lying problem? We're all here because we all need help. First lady, stop. You have visitors. So extra. Yeah. Yeah. Because you, you, you. No, you know, you know, I'm telling you. And then we say we're walking in love. You know what love will do? And I've recognized that my heart is better now after going through some stuff because I understand God's love. It doesn't make me perfect. I have my days where the devil tell me, you should call them and tell them. Just tell them how evil they are. Then it start feeling good. Then I start sitting on entertaining it. Yeah, you're right. You sure is right. Just tell them they're, they're so hypocritical. Mm, that felt good. And while I'm, no, it never happened to you. And while I'm sitting down there and I'm enjoying the thought, then the devil said, take out your phone and start the text message because you need to be very detailed about your side of the story. And um, you need to be very, very detailed. So I'm going to take your phone out and, and, and don't just start like that because you're a Christian now. Huh? Yeah. So you want to put a scripture in it uh-huh and uh and uh and and then uh you want to you want to tell them because you got to get the offense out your heart and and i mean i would start feeling something in me feeling so justified it was feeling so sweet and god said that's the reason why i allow you to get offended because you wouldn't know that that spirit of spite is still in you till you got mad. That's why I'm telling you about the chameleon. You don't know what's in you till you get hit. And God said, I allowed you to get offended one more time because there was something still rooted in you. But this level of offense was going to touch that thing and now I can take it out with your wonderful self. Yeah. yeah. So he's going to allow it to happen again. And if you still feel it in your heart, it's a matter of time before that offense come around. I am prepared to be offended again. So I go out now expecting it's going to happen because I don't know what, what's, I don't know my whole heart. The Bible says, who can know and understand his own heart? The Bible, the Bible said, it is desperately wicked, more wicked than the devil. Because when the, let me show you why the scripture says in Jeremiah that the heart is desperately wicked above all things, all things. Y'all listening to Bible? Because let me tell you something, honey. When the devil will fool people, he will not fool himself. But the problem with our heart is we can fool people and deceive our own selves. Wicked. Because it means that word wicked and deceitful there means it is deceptive. It's not easily deceived. That's not what it means. It's not so innocent that it's easily deceived. No, it says it is deceptive on its own by itself. So you by default have to learn to work against the way you feel to walk in God's love. Hence love is a decision. I was giving you definition don't know how we end up there. At least we need to leave with a definition. Because y'all just going to remember all the stuff I said that was not in the book. But um, yeah. Love. True, genuine, five more minutes, unconditional affection towards God and mankind. So it's true, genuine, unconditional affection. Which means that if we started out in a relationship... And you no longer have the same affection towards me. And it's no conditional. You need to check your heart and stop telling me to check myself. I said you need now to check your heart. I live before God checking my heart. I, have to, I tell you it's so easy to pray for you guys because y'all ain't do me nothing. 
You think I pray more for y'all than the people that hurt me? Step on me and, and then walk out my life. I have to pray more for them because they're the ones that the devil will use to sow bitterness in my heart. No, y'all are wonderful, please. So it's easy to pray for you and bless you and call your names before God. I'm hurried up, bro. Shabba. Oh, Lord, bless them. Oh, Auntie Samantha, I love her. She cooks for me. What are you talking about? I got to pray for her. Lord, bless her in the name of Jesus. Mother Carmen, God, you got to keep her alive because let me tell you, it's so easy. I ain't got no problem. But when I reach around to the other people that the devil throw in my face all day, look what you have done and look what look how they repay you. Look what they have done. And I have to sit there and start breathing deep. And I could almost feel that thing want to get back in my chest. And I have to pull it out. And I have to cry it out like Anna. And I have to pray until that thing gets out. I ain't got no problem with you. My, my love warfare ain't with you. Y'all so sweet. I come here. You hug me up. Give me all this love and stuff. You ain't my problem. So it's easy to pray for you because I ain't got no problem with you. But how about the people that uh, you, you, you recognize in your heart that you, 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 you're sitting down waiting for them to apologize because you know you deserve an apology. And you know that they know that what they did was wrong. And you sitting down there waiting for something that God said, I refuse to let you get it till you get your heart right. So that when they come, you can receive it. So that when they say they're sorry, and when God deal with them, but God won't deal with them until he's done dealing with you. Because if God let them come to apologize now, when the fire is still in your chest, you're going to have another problem. You got to get you straight first. Am I making sense? No, I am going to deal with this thing and I'm not going to go around it. And that's the reason why we have people now, they don't church hop as before, right? People are getting more stable now. But what they do is they, um, they auxiliary hop. And so they, they don't hop out the church, but they hop now within the church. So I'm in media, but Auntie Tasha said something to me. I didn't like it. I just feel like God has called me to the security ministry. My season in media is just up. I just feel like, I mean, and you didn't check that the reason why you want to leave... Why is it that when, oh, why don't we now treat offense in the way that when it comes, we let it root us rather than root us out? Do you ever realize that every time, I mean every time people leave church, it's usually after an offense? Okay, so why did you leave your last church? Because you didn't migrate. You moved over. You didn't migrate. You didn't leave um, Timbuktu to come to church and open fire. They didn't um, deploy you over here. You came from somewhere. Some of y'all, a few radius, centimeter, perimeter down the street. No. We're going to have to deal with this. So now you don't church hop no more. Bless God, y'all don't do that kind of stuff no more. But now you're hopping within the church. So I'm serving, I'm good, I'm here with the praise team and my season is up. Minister Johnson, I need to have a meeting with you because I just feel like God is leading me over the ushers. No, don't go to the ushers, please. Just in the name of Jesus, please don't add. Just stay where you are, where you get cut until you get healed. Because if you can't forgive the people in this team, you ain't going to be able to forgive the people in that other team. Because what you don't know is the warfare in that department might be stronger than what you're dealing with now. And you don't realize that the reason why when we get offense, we offended, we, we remove ourselves. We transplant our own selves, even though the Bible says it's the planting of the Lord. Right? No, 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 no. Mm -mm. We transplant our own selves. And I've explained to you that when a plant is constantly being transplanted, it loses its ability to bear fruit and to take root. But it's those who are planted where in the love of God. Let me give you this last scripture and we are done. Planted where in the love of God, not just in the house of the Lord. We have to understand what the house of the Lord is because you think it's this. This leaves tomorrow and open fire is still a part of the body of Jesus Christ. Ephesians 3 and verse 17 to 19. Bless God. The guys are here to clean the floor. Mm, time. Bless the Lord. Ephesians chapter 3. And are you guys getting this? Am I making any sense? Ephesians chapter 3 verse 17 to 19. 
that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. And when he's dwelling in your hearts by faith, look what's going to happen, right? That he being rooted and grounded, not just rooted, grounded. Because I found out that you, have you ever seen a tree with roots, but it's not in the ground? Yeah, you've ever seen that? You've ever seen somebody pull up a tree, it have roots, but it's not in the ground. So he said, I don't just want for you to have roots. You need to be grounded. Those roots need to be put somewhere. Yeah. I, I used to, you know, in Jamaica, we growing up doing all sort of stuff. You take the stuff up, it has roots, but it's not in the, it's not in the ground. It's not grounded. Grounded means now that roots has now yielded itself to the condition of the ground that it's planted in. Yeah, yielded itself and changed according to the pH balance that's there and still grow. Yeah. Hallelujah. That you being rooted and grounded in love may do what? May be able to comprehend. Love helps us to grow in understanding. Even though we don't fully understand everything right now. May be able to comprehend with all, with, with, with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height. And to know the love of Christ, loveology. And to know the love of Christ, which does what? Pass it all knowledge. I don't need to know you to love you. Because the love in me, just like oh, when the peace of God gets in you, it passes understanding where love passes all knowledge. I don't need to know to walk in this love. That's why it takes faith to love people because you don't know people. That's why he said you must first be rooted in faith because you don't know them. But you're still required to love them. That he may be filled with all the fullness of God. True, genuine, unconditional, unconditional affection towards God and mankind unselfish number two Unsel I'm finished I'm just giving you definition unselfish unselfish so it's not about me it's not about self unselfish attitude unselfish attitude and you know you're not selfish when you get offended and you don't withdraw your services and your commitments yeah because it's unselfish yeah no come on now and you can know when people are offended. No, I'm not upset. I'm just, I just, I'm not going to be able to. No, you know I'm depending on you. So what you mean you're not going to be able to? Translate, first lady. You know I am depending on you. So what do you mean you are not going to be able to do it? You get mad and know you can't do it no more? I know you, you got salty. That's the reason why. Yeah, yeah. You ashy. That's the reason why. Yeah. And no, no, all of a sudden, I'm not going to be able, I, I can't give my dues. I'm just not going to be, I just got to, and I just got stuff. And um, I'm not going to be able to come in. I know I said I was going to help. I really like to be a person of my word and everything. But um, I am, what you're really, what, Trisha, and I love this. Trey, help me Sunday. Here's a translation. You upset me and hurt me so bad right now that I don't even want to be around you. I'm just trying to be polite right now and be Christian enough not to tell you a good piece of my mind. So I'm not going to be able to do it on Wednesday like I thought. And I'm going to have to be able to draw back from the ministry because I got so much stuff going on. No, you are selfish. Unselfish attitude that seeks the constant good of others. I'm going to drive it home, ministers. After I hand this torch over, this definition ought to be repeated constantly. Unselfish attitude that seeks the constant good of others. Having a genuine concern for the welfare of others. Genuine. You know, some people, they just want to get nosy and get in your business. Because they really want to see what's going on and see if you turned out as bad as they were hoping yeah, yeah? uh-huh y'all ain't gonna want me to say nothing but you know first lady 
I should do a sermon called Unfiltered. Yeah. Yeah, it's coming. I feel it. Mm. Yeah. It's genuinely concerned about the welfare. Ain't it funny how you haven't talked to me in six months and as soon as I hear I'm going through something... Oh, Sister Karen, oh my God, Sister Karen, I heard what was going on and you lost your car and this happened to you and you and your husband and really, oh my God, I'm so sorry. But deep in your soul, there's a rejoicing because uh, you... I'm just checking on you. And then you're checking on me and then your Facebook post next says... Huh. <laughs> They just, <laughs> then your Facebook post started sounding like what was really in your heart. Because you couldn't tell me, but now you're inspired to post it. Yeah, what goes around comes right back around. And you start posting stuff that it's not deep reflection in your soul. It's deep reflection in people's business. It's not deep reflection in your soul. It's nothing you learned in prayer. You didn't even pray. When was the last time you prayed? Don't even get me. You didn't even read your Bible this morning. You didn't pray. You forgot how to pray. But all of a sudden, you're inspired now? You're inspired now? No. Your inspiration is because of something bad that happened to people. But what did the Bible say in Proverbs? And I'm going to pull up that scripture probably on next week when the Bible said, when you see a man going through calamity and you begin to be happy about what he's going to, the Bible said that God will see what's happening to him and remove his judgment and put it on you. So some of us wonder why sudden affliction come about us. It's because God saw that your heart towards the sister was you happy that she went through what she went through. Yeah. Don't joke with God. So we better get this house clean. Did you get this tonight? You sure? So we're going to be doing better, right? During this season, I'm going to teach you how to extend yourself beyond yourself. So you don't get hurt by people that you know is going to hurt you. You know they're going to do stuff. But you're going to know how to deal with them and love them. Because if, if, let me tell you something. It's one thing if people hurt you when you didn't have any discernment about what's going to happen. But it's another thing if you got hurt when you already discerned that it was going to happen. So you need to know have the wisdom and the balance of how to manage relationships. You ought to forgive them and be good to them, but you can't come back to my house again. It just is what it is. Manage relationship. Yeah. And I'll invite you, but I'm going to invite you when I'm inviting five other persons. Yeah. It ain't going to be me and you again, honey. Uh-uh. That kind of one-on-one -on -one and stuff, it's over. It's over. It's over. Yeah. I'm going to invite you because we have in a cookout. No problem. You better carry something to eat too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But after that, that's it. I love you so much. God bless you. And I really love you from the core of my heart. But love is not trust. And love is not friendship. Y'all don't get it twisted. Stand to your feet tonight. You're going to be wiser. And you're going to love the right way. And it's going to be pure. It's going to be pure and purified. I believe tonight was an awesome night. This is a great place to start. You know, usually it really takes me three weeks to lay a foundation. So we have some more groundwork to do. But we're going to take an opportunity to give our best seats tonight. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. He's amazing. He's amazing. You got your seeds. We want to be giving God our best. How many of you are practicing to put your tithes and your offering? Even if it's $5 per service, I promise you, you're going to see something happen. I'm telling you, I live my life like this. Right now, I want some money. I don't know where it's going to come from. But I know for sure, I will always have a seed. I might not have a wig, but I'm going to have some seed to sow. Because the Lord gives seed to the sower, so I always have a seed to sow because I'm a sower. You know, people that don't usually have seed, we may, they may have to check themselves because God gives seeds to sower. 
So probably the reason why we don't have seeds, I'm not trying to embarrass anybody. I'm trying to help you, help your heart to be a soul. Did, I'm going to share your testimony quick. On two weeks ago, y'all remember when there was a $50 challenge? And two weeks ago, they're sitting down their last $50. I don't mean like your last $50 that you can go in the ATM and then get another $50, okay? Their last $50 seed. Both of them were unemployed at the moment. Their last $50 seed. And they decided we are going to sow this last $50. And two days later, he ended up getting a job. And then the third day, she ended up getting a job. And these people are new, working the principal in your old church. And by faith, God is responding to them. And they're getting ready to buy their first car. You cannot tell me this isn't God. Oh, Jesus. Can I tell you something else about them? I am coming to church in the rain the other day when Prophet Johnson was here. Do you know that this young lady walks to church in the rain? And some of y'all with your wonderful self in a thunderstorm... She was walking to church with a umbrella. And they, they were walking to church and riding to church. She was walking back home. Stay till service finished. We found out the other day. That's how Latoya began to take them, take her home. We found out the other day. And God has turned their lives around. And we're getting ready to get them married. When again? July. July. Oh, Bashanda Rabahanda. soyo. Hey, but that's why I'm telling you these people are new and let me tell you something about both of them so that's his fiance but guess what they didn't know they were coming to the same church so one evening they both showed up and looked at each other and said you come here she said this is my church he said this is my church perfectly God's design and we're going to bless you guys and we're going to help you guys because if you did that by faith, don't you ever forget and look at the doors that God has opened. Hallelujah. And when God opened door, no man can shut them. So you have to learn how to step out. And know God is providing. I said, I was, when I realized this young lady is walking to church and I sat down, these cute open fire people because you're so blessed walk into church have you ever seen have you ever come to church since they've been here and never seen them never they don't miss a service my god you can't tell me god don't bless people who are faithful to him so i want you to stand with your attitude and your heart right knowing that tonight when you sow god is getting ready to turn things around is that we're blessing the city go ahead musician Come on, lift those seeds. Daddy, we thank you tonight. You are the Lord of the harvest. We offer up our seeds to you tonight as worship to you, our Father. We thank you for the increase and the overflow and the breakthrough and the turnaround. And we thank you for the harvest on this weekend. And we call it so now in Jesus' name. Come on, enjoy and sow your seeds tonight.
Now remember, tomorrow from 5 in the morning till 5 in the evening, we are fasting for this conference this weekend. So I'm going to be needing everybody to forget how much you love food. I love to eat too. Believe me, I do. Right? But um, tomorrow we're going to be fasting. Believe in God for a move of God. Praise team. We are fasting. We need a move of God. So y'all ain't going to just come and be cute because y'all like being wonderful. We need a move of God. Why are y'all looking at me like that? All right? We're in fasting on tomorrow. Bless the Lord. Now, uh, I'm going to release you, but I believe the men are needed. Because remember, we are trying to get all the men to help us serve. This is the thing. I need the daughters to be poured into. I don't need them doing the ushering and the greeting and all the extra stuff if they don't have to. I know Minister Patricia may still have to man some stuff, but I need all the men. It's a women's conference, but it's your church and we need your help. So we need security. We need people with the parking and we need men ushers, please. All right, so make sure you see Elder Sheldon and Minister Blunt immediately. They're going to be stripping the floor, so they're going to be moving the furniture, so just be. So we're going to kind of need you guys to be on the other side, or, you know, because we're trying to strip the area so we can wax and strip the floor. Bless God. But let me release a blessing over your life. And by the way, I absolutely love you guys. I felt tonight was so beautiful. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We honor you. You are so faithful to us. You never change. You're amazing, mighty God. And we bless your holy name. Thank you for your word tonight, your love and your Holy Spirit. Thank you for stirring us like your Bible, like your word said, provoking us to love. In the name of Jesus and mighty God, we bless you tonight. And even as we're getting ready to leave from this place, but not from your presence, in the mighty name of Jesus, Ekomo, Shanda, yes God, eh, mighty God even as we're getting ready to leave from here but not from your presence we thank you for strength we thank you for divine protection and it is so in Jesus name hallelujah testimony quickly it just dawned on me sister Kim called they can't find one they, all the test results came back looking completely different than how they were looking before they couldn't find nothing that said stroke till, the, till they didn't even know what to document. Wait, did you know what they told Kim that the test said she had? A migraine. We've moved from stroke to you not seeing, to you not talking, to you having a migraine because they don't know what to call it, but it was a miracle. It was a miracle. The Lord still heals. The Lord bless you and keep you. And cause his face to shine upon you. Love on somebody before you go and see you guys. And she's on her way home.